It's Eliza McNamara here to talk to you today about the importance of being yourself. What I've noticed is very few people actually know who they are, so they're incapable of being themselves because they themselves do not know who they are. And the very first step to actually being yourself and not worrying about what other people think and not being driven by your friends or the media or society's view of how you should live your life, the very first step is to know who you are because if you're strong in who you are and you really know who you are, then no amount of brainwashing is going to turn you into someone you're not, is going to persuade you to do things that would be out of character for you because you know what your character is. And see, a lot of people, because they work so hard and they work such long hours, they don't actually have any time to get to know themselves. They don't have time with themselves. They spend a huge amount of time with their colleagues and their co-workers and they, then they spend the rest of their time with their flatmates or their husband or their wife and their kids. So there's no time in there for them to know who they are. And on top of this, people are constantly being bombarded with messages from advertising, from the media, that the average person spends four hours a day watching television. Nine years. The average person spends nine years of their life over a period of 70 years or how long they live for watching television, which is full of brainwashing, which is full of messages telling you who you should be, what you should wear, what you should look like, who you should associate with, what kind of work you should do, where you should study. We're constantly being bombarded with all of this advertising. And it's impossible now to walk down the street or turn on the television or listen to the radio without listening to advertising. And if you actually spend a day paying attention to these messages, you'll realize that most of them have influenced you and your life, at least to some degree. And we all like to think that we're free. We all like to think that we have freedom of thought. But the fact of the matter is, most people are not free at all. They're constantly doing things because they feel a very big desire to please others. And let's face it, if you don't please others, at least to some degree, then you're going to be very, very lonely. So you have to, at least to some degree, conform. We live in a society that runs in a way that has to be... Um, um, God, this is going to need editing. We live in a society that requires us to conform, to fit into the systems that have been created for us. These systems keep things going and these systems are fantastic, but we also need to make sure that we take time away from our work, away from our families, away from our friends, to really get in touch with who we are and stay true to who we are and not be influenced by advertising. Because there are women who have 50 pairs of shoes and there are women who have 10 pairs of shoes. Who's to say that having 50 pairs of shoes is going to make you happy? Of course it's not. The media will have you believe that having 50 pairs of shoes is a fantastic thing for a woman to do. And the media will make you think that if you're a woman and you have 50 pairs of shoes, you're normal. And if you don't, well, there's something wrong with you. And if you're a man and you have those 50 pairs of shoes, oh, there's definitely something wrong with you there. You know, men are encouraged to be successful and to have success in business and to accomplish things and women are encouraged to be crazy about children and be crazy about what they look like and spend inordinate amounts of time and money on shopping and plastic surgery and goodness knows what else and the sad thing is if you look around you in most developed countries a lot of women are conforming to this and a lot of men are conforming to this too but how many women do you know that are obsessed about their appearance? And how many men do you know that are obsessed about their work? I'm not saying it's bad to care about what you look like or that it's bad to be obsessed about your work. What I am saying is that the reason why we're obsessed about things we're obsessed about is often not something that comes from within us, not something that comes from our desires. It's often something which comes from the outside. And we internalize these things and we think that it's who we are and we think that it's 
normal, but it's not. Love.